Another data source that's used regularly is a REST API. So let's add a RESTful data source. Add, scroll down to REST API and click continue. I'm going to integrate with the Star Wars API, the Swappy, which is going to let me integrate and find out various details about that universe. You can import a set of queries or you can add an individual query. So I'll do that to start off with. I'm going to go to HTTPS swappy.dev slash API slash people. I'm going to send that request off. Now that sends off and it gets me back the data I get from that raw request. There are lots of ways that I can configure this. I can add any parameters that I might need for authentication, authorization, or any other configuration I might need to pass. Equally, I can add headers and send a body. I can also pass on pagination details. So in my instance, I can see that there is pagination. It's number-based pagination. You can see it's here. Um, the, it's in the query. It's the page number parameter name is page. You can see that there. And the page size parameter name isn't given here, so I'll leave that blank. And finally, there's the transformer, which allows us to transform the data. So that's going to be pretty important because down at the bottom, I've got a JSON overview and I've got an extracted schema, which isn't very useful because actually the key data is in this results array down here. So if I look at the preview, I get this quite ugly count, next, previous, and then just these five object objects. So these objects that don't really know much about them. So instead of returning the data, what would be more useful for me is if I got the results back. Now in the transformer, I'm able to pass any JavaScript query that's going to return the full data object. So I could iterate over this in some way and be able to parse the data, format the data, pull out things I didn't want or add things that I did. So I'll do that and then I will save what I've got and send that request off again. So I've sent the request off again now and it's worth pointing out that this JSON object is not the full JSON response, but is an example row. Well, now the schema is much more useful because our results object, the payload we actually care about is the results. And so we can see we're extracting its name, height, mass, lots of things that we care about. And the preview then is really helpful. I can see and I can scroll across and I've got much more information that's much more useful within my application. So that's going to be getting all the people. So get all people. What if I wanted to get an individual person? So I'm going to go back in here and add a query. And this time it's going to be get individual person. So in that instance, it's going to be HTTPS swappy.dev forward slash people forward slash the ID of the person I want to get. So I'm going to add a binding for ID and I'll set the default to one. And inside of here, I'm going to use handlebars notation. So the bindings that we've talked about before to be able to render the ID, which could be controlled here as my default value. But within my application, I can query it based on where I am in the page route or some input that I get from my user. So if I send that off now, I'm getting back a result for Luke Skywalker. I've got the schema, I've got what it looks like is a preview, and that looks pretty good. But just to check, I'm getting the right thing. I'm going to change default to two and try sending that off. I get C3PO. That's looking good. So I'll save that and I'm ready to go. For my RESTful API, I could also use any of the other verbs. So post, put, patch, and delete. So I can use that to update my data, delete my data, and create new data as well. We do that in exactly the same way. Back in the overall API page, I can see a summary of my queries. I can add some global headers, authentication, and variables that are static or dynamic. I'm really able to control this API integration in a really granular way.